Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for IDW Sonic the Hedgehog issue 31. Uh, when we last left our heroes, a lot of stuff happened in the aftermath of the Metal Virus Saga. Uh, really, no one was defeated, <laughs> we learned. Uh, Zabok still had some fight in him, though uh, the combined efforts of a lot of people, and specifically Sil uh, Silver's telekinesis, helped to weigh him down. Eggman is still still around, and he escaped uh, in the shuttle. Uh, Orbot and Cubot picked up Omega's head, which is you know spells some trouble. Uh, and then Sonic turned up in Blaze's world after the events of uh, Victor Twenty Nine and the Warp Topaz explosion. He is shifted dimensions and will presumably take some time to get back to our world. All that being said, let's jump right on into issue 31. Our cover here is a lot of the crew, with notably Sonic missing, uh, partying. Uh, we see like fireworks, like lanterns strung up in the between rooftops. But there is also a suspicious claw coming to like, you know, do bad things. It's like it's a robotic, very clearly an Eggman claw. Uh, but anyway. We have our story so far here with Sonic um, um, getting the metal virus out of off the planet. Um, Silver telling the telling Amy to tell the Knuckles what happened, uh, and then Sonic uh, Eggman escape and Sonic um, arriving on Blaze's world. Uh, our, our roll call, we have Amy, Jewel, Tails, Tangle, Whisper, Eggman, Team Chaotix, Cream, Vanilla, Jamerl, Shadow, and Rouge, which implies that the Deadly Six will not be a big immediate threat right now, as was kind of slightly, you know, last issue went to a lot of effort to show that they were still out there. Uh, but apparently they're not going to immediately be doing anything. I think Zapdok is already slated for the Bad Guys miniseries starting next month. Uh, so maybe we won't see anything from him until then. Anyway, all that being said, Imperial Palace of the Saul Empire. Blaze the Cat's World and Dimension. Uh, and so we open with Blaze, like, sipping tea at, like, a dinner table or something. The Sonic the Hedgehog I know was a hero. A paragon. He was as swift and free as the wind. He had no master, but fought for any one and every one. There was no challenge too great, no threat too dire that he wouldn't face without swagger and a smile. Uh, and she's sipping tea with Sonic, who responds, He sounds very impressive. I'd like to meet him one day. Has Sonic lost his memory? I... Who do you think you are? Uh, and Sonic responds, I'm afraid I haven't the foggiest, your highness. I met the most precocious little girl, though, who dubbed me Mr. Needlemouse. I like the sound of that. Uh, and Blaze, like, sets her teacup down. We see she's, like, lit a little bit of a fire, uh, in the cup. I, maybe she's heating up the tea, like, as a normal thing, because she does have flame powers. Maybe it's a sign of her, um emotions kind of getting mad it's the fact that sonic is now amnesiac or something um but anyway blaze asks you've had some time to rest and think do you recall anything on uh, sonic responds he, see he seems like very kind of teasing with, with his body language the whole like hand on the face thing um the the smirk with he sounds very impressive like to meet him one day um anyway nothing concrete all my memories seem warped. I dream of sea and sky, of golden fire, and a sense of falling. And that's all. And he takes some of his tea and blaze things. What in the world did this to you, Sonic? Uh, so I'm curious how long this is going to go on for. Because I thought, you may recall, the Mr. Tinker plotline would go on a hell of a lot longer than it did. Uh, and that was a plot line that had room to be much longer than Sonic does not have his memories. Um, because Sonic is the main character, and there are, you know, other villains they could have gone to besides Eggman, that they eventually did go to besides Eggman. Uh, so Sonic is going to get his memories back sooner rather than later. I'm curious if it will be by the end of this issue, though. Anyway, what's happening on your world now? And then we cut back to the, to uh, to their world, Restoration HQ, Sonic's world and dimension, uh, and we see 
Amy, like, in her office amid the rubble. One thing I did not mention in my previously on section, but I mentioned in uh, last month's video, it, one thing I really liked about last issue is Amy is starting to feel the weight of, like, the endless cycle that's kind of inherent in this series. Um, and I'm really excited for the series to explore that. Anyway, she looks amid the rubble and the stacks of paperwork. I can't do this. I'm no leader. I helped administrate the resistance because everyone needed to pitch in. I only took over the restoration because there was nobody else and the work had to be done. What I wouldn't give to go back to the days when it was just me and Sonic racing from one adventure to the next. Um... I don't know. I'm, I, I'm trying to picture a world where the series can do that. And I don't think it... I think this is just her life now. Uh, and then she thinks for a moment, Sonic. He gave everything to save us from the metal virus. He never gave up. So neither should I. And she reaches for the first paper on her huge stack of paperwork. But I wish I had some help. Uh, and in walks Jewel. Hello? Miss Rose? Am I in the right place? Uh, and Amy gets up to greet her. Please, call me Amy. And you are? Jewel, curator of Spiral Hills Mineral Museum. I'm a friend of Tangle's. Ah, okay, she's mentioned you. What can I do for you? Uh, and Jewel blushes like looks away. The other way around, actually. She told me how you weren't enjoying the rigors of running things, and that was before the plague. I enjoy cataloging and organizing. I see this room and feel excited at the idea of bringing it all to order. So if you like, I am offering to take over administration of the Restoration and give you a break. Does that mean Jewel's going to be like the leader of the Restoration? Oh, that sounds fun. Mm. And Amy just like breaks down, like hands over her mouth. Thank you. Uh, and Jewel's kind of like taking the back. Uh, oh my, I didn't realize you were so strained. Uh, and Amy invites her in. You're a lifesaver, Jewel. But unlike a certain echidna I know, I'll make sure you're up to speed before stepping down. She's full on, like, gonna gonna resign <laughs> and make Jewel, who she's met five seconds ago, the leader of the Restoration. <laughs> um, I'd appreciate that. What are our primary goals? And we're starting to see Jewel is all of a sudden looking a little uncertain about what she's just, about what she's just offered. Organizing supplies for rebuilding and finding people displaced by their time as zombots. Uh, speaking of, we now go down to Echo Mine, uh, where we last left Rough and Tumble. Uh, and we see Rough and Tumble lying on the bottom of, of the pit where they fell into a year ago. <laughs> no way out. Bentley is starting to grumble. Looks like this is the end for Rough and Tumble. Oh, I missed their rhyming. I will admit, I just don't remember which one is Rough and which one is Tumble. <laughs> uh, but whatever. Uh, and just then, a tail br br brings, um, uh, falls down, and, uh, the black one freaks out. Gah! Cave spider! Uh, and it seems to be Tangle's tail. You guys okay? Grab my tail. I'll haul you out. And Tangle and, and Tails, um, at the top of, of this, um, at the top of the pit, you know, um, Shine in, shine the light down, getting them out. Woohoo, we're saved! Uh, but the white one looks at the tail. It just ain't fair. And to add insult to injury. Um, so for a second there, when I saw it just ain't fair, I thought, I think that's, is Tumble the white one? Um, yeah, Tumble's the white one. I just kind of Googled it off to the side. <laughs> uh, I thought that it just ain't fair was going to be like, Tank, or... Uh, tumble betraying Tangle and like dragging her down with them or something. I guess that wouldn't make sense because they wouldn't really have a way to get out. Um, and to add insult to injury, uh, as Tumble makes it out and Ruff asks, what's the deal? How come you're being nice to us? Mm -hmm. uh, and Tangle looks at them. Sonic cured the world of the metal virus. The gunk Eggman tricked you two into using. He gave the whole world a second chance. So we're making sure everyone gets it. And Tail's kind of sweating. You're welcome, by the way. Uh, and Rough and Tumble just break down laughing. <laughs> you dorks just gave us a free pass to run wild. Look out, world. The baddest boys are back. Uh, <laughs> and Tangle kind of like grins at that. So, back in jail by the end of the day? If they don't get lost in the mines. 
Uh, so they were cl clearly prepped for this happening. Uh, and then Ta Tangle turns to Tails and asks, How are you handling Sonic being, you know? Uh, and S Tails looks away, I'm fine. Uh, and Tangle turns back to him, I mean it, little dude. Me too, and it's going to be okay, I promise. I'm sure we'll see Sonic again one day. He's beaten the odds a million times, and I believe in him, because he's never let me down. And until then, he'll be counting on us to keep the peace. Uh, and Tangle's like, thumbs up. I see why he's always hanging with you. Hey, I can see why he's always hanging out with you. You're aces. And in the background, we see uh, Rough and Tumble just hopelessly lost. Aw, thanks. And then uh, we see Tangle eyes lighting up. And Sonic would expect us to celebrate. Would expect us to celebrate us surviving. Of course, party's at my place, and everyone is invited. Um, so I guess that that ties in with the uh with the cover of the whole whole gang partying. Uh, though again, that robotic hand spells some bad news for the, how how the party is gonna go. Uh, but anyway, too bad Silver's already gone home. And then we see Silver back in the future, uh, per perhaps giving a hint of whatever the next big threat is going to be. Um, so, you know, he flies across. Well, I'm back to my own time period. The grass is normal. That's a good sign. So, yeah, we see the grass is normal. We see these skyscrapers in the distance. But a lot can change in a couple hundred years. Is everything restored? Or And he makes it to the city. There's, like, screens kind of, like, floating in, in the air. Um, and that's all... Oh, here we go. Sonic. I, I, I almost uh, missed a panel on accident. Sonic. Everyone. Thank you. We made a good future. This feels like a final scene. I know it's not a final scene, uh, but this feels like an epilogue of, like, of, of this series. Like, you know, we saved the future. The world is safe. The end. Uh, so I'm curious how, because so, of course Silver is eventually going to get roped back into the plot, and I'm curious how they're going to do it, uh, but let's wait and see. And then we come back to Dr. Eggman's lab in the present. Uh, oh, and one last word from Silver, may your time stay peaceful too. And of course it's not going to, because Eggman's here. Which, honestly, if Eggman is still at large, why did Silver leave the present? I feel like he'd want to stay behind and deal with that, right? Uh, but I guess not. And he'll, he'll come back when the, when the going gets tough, I know. Anyway. Mm. Eggman has seemingly completed a new body for Omega. Uh, which is interesting, because Omega currently wants to murder him. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and Eggman approaches it carrying what I think is Omega's head. And now for the finishing touch. How does it feel to be corporeal again, Omega? Good. Destroying you will enhance this by 90%. Uh, and uh, Eggman, like, makes, like, looks him eye to eye. Ooh, ha ha ha. Oh, I bet it would. But I locked down your body, so there will be no mayhem for you. Satisfaction decreased by 100%. It gets better. I'll be using you for a special project. Welcome back to the Eggman Empire, E123. Hatred processing at peak efficiency. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing that's whatever's under this tarp. That hand we see peeking out under the tarp it looks very much like our hand from the front cover. Um, yeah, I think that's the same thing. Uh, we see they both have kind of like spikes encrusted in the wrist. Uh, so I'm guessing that's whatever, whatever's going to attack the party later in the issue. Anyway, uh, and so we see Orbot and Cubot just kind of relaxing right as Eggman comes in. Orbot, Cubot, report! Uh, and Orbot responds, No good news, I'm afraid, boss. The Zombots really did a number on your faces, especially once the Deadly Six took over. Uh, and Eggman sits down, he like pulls up a, a screen. Where are those miserable Zeddy, anyway? And does that, this... Death, so on the screen, we see a couple of designs. One of them's a very, like, humanoid robot. The other... Is that Death Star-looking thing a Death Bag reference? Um, is that kind of the implication there? That the, the Death Bag is coming back? Uh, that could be fun. Anyway, where are those miserable Zeddy, anyway? Zabok was defeated and has been safely locked away. 
The other five are at large, but appear to be laying low. All right, so that's interesting because I think because I think it's already been confirmed that Zabok is going to whatever Starline is getting up to in um, in Bad Guys. Zabok is going to be playing a part in it, uh, but apparently not, or apparently he'll have to like break Zabok out to do that. So we'll see. There's still another month till Bad Guys comes out, and there's plenty of issues that will come up before then. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> anyway, Eggman stands up. There's nothing for it, then. It's full steam ahead on the next project. Uh, and Cubot asks, Gee, boss, why not take a vacation? Indeed, you worked very hard trying to doom us all. And I know I'd like some time off. <laughs> uh, and Cubot responds, Yeah, go someplace nice, like the basement. Keep dreaming big, buddy. <laughs> I love those two. They're, I've loved them since Sonic Colors. They've always been a blast. Um, and yeah, they're icons. Anyway, this is no time to rest. I need to establish my next plan before Sonic inevitably returns to cause me headaches. And now I have to factor in the errant Zeddy. The cacophonic conch was lost when Rouge, cr crashed, when Rouge crashed the face ship, which leaves me defense defenseless against them. And there's Dr. Starline to consider. Uh, and Cubot responds, oh yeah, I liked him. He smelled nice. Uh, way to go, Cubot. Did, did, did you have... What's the... Can, can, can robots smell? Is that a thing? Uh, Orbot asks, Whatever happened to your fanboy? I mean, protege. Uh, and Eggman looks, looks behind him. That's the thing. I don't know. He opened the warp portal and I punted him through it. I didn't think to look where he was retreating to. He could be anywhere. Uh, and then we see Dr. Starline's repository, where Starline clearly is, with a bunch of... Eggman robots, the kind of like minor ones from the the later games, um, not like a bad neck style robot, but but one of the more one of the more modern ones. Oh, Doctor, why can't you see the error in your ways? He's doing something to an Eggman crate. Eggman truly is the genius I thought him to be, but he's inept in his execution. And Sonic is every bit the powerhouse I expected, but he's just reckless. So much wasted potential. That I have the clarity of vision. I can improve upon them. Like you improved upon the, the situation by inviting the deadly six to the planet? Is that your clarity of vision, Starline? <laughs> I mean, maybe he means he can learn from his mistakes, but we'll have to wait and see. Fear not, Doctor. I am still loyal despite your cruelty. I'll conquer the world. Surpass you so that you might learn by example. And when I seat you on the throne of victory, you will acknowledge I was right. You will listen to me, and we will work together as equal minds. So that's interesting. Even with all that, Starline's still whole goal is still to put Eggman on the throne. To give Eggman control of the world. Not to give himself control of the world. Which is interesting. Um, and again, I'm really excited for bad guys to see... Um, See where Starline goes from here. And now we check in with the Chaotix over in Seaside City. Uh, and we see, you know, they're in their office. Uh, uh, Vector's on the phone. Uh, Espio is running around with a bunch of paperwork. Charmy is doing something. Uh, and Vector says, Chaotix Detective Agency, please hold. Yes, I'm the lead detective. Please hold. No, is it a double extra large? No cheese. Please hold. <laughs> Glad you have your priorities in order, Vector. So many missing persons cases. Almost makes me miss the days when we couldn't find work. <laughs> Way to go, Vector. Glad you're ha finding work. I'm glad you have, have money now. Uh, and just then, someone knocked on the door. Please hold. I mean, it's open. We'll be with you in a minute? Hour? Sometime this week? Um, instead of a customer, it is the Rabbit Gang and Jamerl, who's apparently fixed after Metal Sonic stabbed him in the chest. Uh, hello, everyone. This is uh, Cream. You've been working so hard to reunite everyone and their families, so we've brought you lots of tasty treats to keep you going. Uh, and Espio looks at the basket Vanilla has brought. You are a treasure, Miss Cream. Uh, and Charmy, eyes lit up. Ooh, gimme! Uh, and Vanilla turns to Vector. Even at the height of the plague, you were all so selfless. Oh, well, uh, it's all part of being a good detective, ma'am. Please, call me Vanilla. Oh, okay, and he has a big thumbs up. 
right as the phone starts ringing again, and he starts sweating. <laughs> um, sorry, Vanilla, but we don't have time to eat, or sleep, or do our job, ironically. Uh, and he kind of, you know, is embarrassed that this grieving has been, um, this, this social call has been interrupted by, by work. Well, that simply won't do. Jim Merle, would you mind helping? Uh, and Jim Earl just, like, runs through, uh, the, the paper, all of the missing person's notes, like he's the Flash or something. At once, scanning data, preparing a database of all missing persons. Uh, cheese, Chocola, put the files away, please. Cream and I will handle the calls for now and update you as Jamerl processes information. Uh, and Cream's like ready to go. I'll take lots of notes. And then Vector responds, so that means we're free to do our thing. Let's go, Chaotix. So it looks like the rabbit family family is like joining the Chaotix for the time being. <laughs> that sounds fun. Uh, and then we cut to Forest Hill. Uh, we have one last line from, from Vector, like all of these scenes have been giving us. Time to find those missing people. Uh, and then we open on Shadow, who is standing on a piece of, like, floating turf, uh, as Rouge finds him. There you are. You can be a pain to track down, you know. Uh, and Shadow just looks away kind of sullenly. Things seem to have settled down. All the bad guys are in hiding. At least they're not causing trouble. But I can't find any sign of Sonic or Omega. Uh, and Shadow still does not respond as Rouge looks at him. Did you hear a word I said? Yes. What's up? You're even more brooding than usual. Um, and Shadow is just lost in thought, seemingly about his mistake at Sunset City. He said to run. What I thought was cowardice was a warning. That one mistake took me out of the fight. Me, the ultimate life form, mis miscalculating like that? It's unacceptable. Uh, so yeah, he's really beating himself up over apparently this perfection complex. I didn't really know that he had, but it kind of makes sense. You know, if you're told your entire life you're the ultimate life form, eventually you're going to be like, I have to be perfect or something's fucked up. Uh, and he clearly did fuck up during that fight. Uh, but Rouge, you know, doesn't hear any of this because it's all in his head. Uh, but she continues, If you can't talk about it, I'll leave it be. Excuse me. Uh, and Shadow turns back. I owe him. Now he's gone. That's all. Uh, and Rouge kind of like grabs him by the shoulder and then flies away. There's a big party going down at Spiral Hill tonight. Everyone's invited. Even you. Pass. Figured, but I thought I'd try. And now we cut to Spiral Hill, where everyone is partying. It was great. Like, this whole-on, full-page picture uh, we have Tails and Charmy and Cream all flying. I guess they're all the flyers. Uh, Espio is sitting on like a rooftop uh, with an ice sculpture of Sonic. Uh, we see Rouge and I think that's the main guy of the Sonic fan club. Along with Jewel and Tangled, Cheese and Jacola, Amy, Big, uh, Vector all dancing. Uh, I love that Jewel is like holding on to, to Tangle's tail. Um... And then we have uh, Jet in like in a little little, not quite outside, not quite inside kind of place. Uh, where's my ice sculpture? I nearly got infected to save you, Ingrates. Where's my recognition? I mean, almost everyone got infected by the end there, Jet. <laughs> uh, but Wave and Storm are enjoying things. Uh, Wave, dinner, and a show. We ought to save the world more often. Uh, and then. Um, oh, oh, Whisper is seeing, Whisper notices the rogues, uh, and, uh, Tango comes over to her, Simmer Girl, they attacked the town. Yeah, but they did help save us all. Let's give him this one. Plus, I'd rather not have another fight in my hometown so soon, you know? I understand. That's my girl. Now let's get some grub for your wisps. They do eat, right? Um... So yeah, with that, you get some great Tangle and Whisper bonding. Again, they need their own full-on spin-off series, not a mini-series. Give Tangle and Whisper a monthly, all I'm saying. But just then, there's a loud crash. Mwah ha ha ha! The life of the party's here! Uh, and Tangle looks, you gotta be kidding me! And it's Eggman, with the hand from the cover, what did I tell y'all? And I'll be ending all of yours. Next time, Eggman on the attack. 
Sonic Missing. Will our heroes finally find peace? Um, we have next time, which we see, I think this is the cover, which looks to be a, like connecting to last to this, this issue's cover, because uh, we have uh, the rest of the hand of the robot, um, Omega connected to this big machine, which fits with what Eggman was saying uh, earlier in this issue, and a flaming Sonic, which implies that Sonic may be coming back next issue. Whether that is as himself or as Mr. Needle Mouse remains to be seen. Also, the flame of pillar, I just the pillar of flame I just noticed, um, extends all the way up to the sky, uh, which again from Blaze's world. Uh, and yeah, that's this issue. So this is very much an epilogue issue, almost like just as much as last time's. Um, though last time. Last time's issue felt very much like wrap, wrapping up the Metal Virus Saga, and this one feels a little bit of wrapping up the Metal Virus Saga, but also kind of setting up the new status quo. Um, like, we have Sonic without his memories in Blaze's world, which, if next issue's cover is anything to go by, won't exactly be lasting for very long, but it's still, still there for now. Um, we have, you know, Amy giving control of the Restoration to Jewel, uh, which Jewel does not seem to seems to kind of be backing off of by by issues end. Uh, Rough and Tumble are free again. Uh, the future is seemingly safe, uh, though it's not Silver's future if it ever stays that way. Uh, Eggman has his next has his next plan with um, with with Omega, which is already put into place by the end of the issue, so it's not exactly a new status quo. Uh, but it then ties into, you know, Zavok being in jail, and then Starline with his plans to put Eggman back on top, which again, I feel like he should have moved past Eggman by now. <laughs> like, the man betrayed you, uh, with good reason, to be fair. But, uh, I don't know, I feel like he'd be a little bit bitter or more bitter? More bitter. Um, then we see the Chaotix and their, their new arrangement with the Rabbit family. For at least as long as um, the the fallout of the um, of the Metal Virus Saga is still in play, uh, it seems like the rabbits will be like manning the offices while the Chaotix go out and detective. Uh, we see what may be a recurring 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 dilemma for Shadow as he deals with the fact that he fucked up on Sunset City. And I'm really glad they're coming back to that. Because I remember a little bit of criticism there of just, like, how dumb Shadow was to not run uh, after he got infected. Um, and I'm very glad that both, you know, the writing and Shadow himself recognize that he fucked up there. And he has to do better next time. And honestly, I've been a Shadow fan since I was a little kid. Uh, <laughs> so I'm more than happy to see Shadow get some, get some good introspection. Um... And then, yeah, we have the party. It's a good time. Get a little bit of fun with the rogues. Um, and, you know, Whisper still still being a little, little bitter about the rogues uh, after the events of 2019's annual, which, honestly, I don't... I didn't exactly remember Whisper being there before I this page. <laughs> uh, but I'm sure she was, or this scene wouldn't make any sense. Uh, and then, yeah, Eggman has attacked the party. Oops. And there's this line here, will our heroes finally find peace? Uh, which kind of brings up what I was talking about with Amy over the past couple of issues, how she's kind of realizing that this never ends. And that's kind of why she left the restoration, because she can't physically can't deal with the fact, with the basic structure of this comic, that you know there always has to be a new threat, always has to be a new foe. The games can kind of get away with this because they're very like insulated storylines, but because the comics are a longer serialized story, I'm loving the idea that the never-ending nature of the comic kind of weighs on Amy. That's fascinating, and I cannot wait. That that's even more than Shadow's whole of dealing with his own failure. That's the that's the mental character development thing I really want to see the series dig into going forward. Uh, and it looks like you know the series is just interested in digging into that as I am. So I can't wait to see what happens with that. 
Uh, I want to see how the party ends up. I'm sh the party is not exactly a big thing. It's not, you know, this isn't going to lead into the next Metal Virus saga, I think. It's going to be like a one-time. Here's Eggman. We're going to beat Eggman. Maybe there can eventually be peace, but not yet. He'll get away. You know, the whole shebang. Maybe Sonic will come back to himself seeing Eggman again. Uh, which would kind of make the whole memory loss thing a little lame. Um... Much the same way Tinker's restoration was a little little lame back in issue 12. But anyway, yeah, that's kind of a lot to say, which is a lot. It's been 30 minutes. Um, so yeah, that's all I have to say for this issue. Hope you all enjoyed the issue and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe. Or, you know, do whatever makes you happy, you know? And remember, your life is your own, okay? Bye!